we dealt with the nature of roots when we were solving quadratic equations and we were making use of the discriminant. But in this lesson, I need us to look at how we can use graphs to interpret problems that involve nature of roots. So we are going to be solving equations graphically. The function of x is given there. It is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we are required to sketch the graph. Sketching the graph is okay, you can do that. Uh, make sure that you do get your turning points and your intercepts and draw the graph. Given that function, we are required to determine for which values of k the equation x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to k will have non-real roots. The graphical method requires us to draw the graphs and then work out the values of x at the point of intersection. So if you are given the equation x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to k, there are two graphs that you can draw. First of all, the graph of the function on the left-hand side, which is y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, as well as the graph of the function on the right-hand side, which is given by y is equal to k. So we need to draw those two graphs. In practice, the two graphs that we will draw, the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, and the graph of y is equal to k, will not meet. These graphs will not intersect. That is why we cannot find any real roots. So non-real roots there is telling us that the graphs that we drew, or the graphs, the graphs that we will draw, will actually not intersect. Uh, the graph of f is given there, that is our original graph, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we are interested in the other graph. The right-hand side, remember, we said it was y equal to k. So of those two graphs, here is a situation that we get. The dotted lines that you see there are the possible, some of the possible positions for the graph of y is equal to k. Non-real roots means they do not touch each other. Right, if we start at the top there, that line y equals 5, and our red graph, they touch. At y equal to 4, these graphs cut twice. y is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 3, and y is equal to negative 4, you will notice they touch there, which means where they touch, we can actually get real roots. We don't get real roots in places where the graphs do not touch. So where do they not intersect? Do you see that they will not intersect if our y value is smaller than negative 4, which tells us that the roots are non-real. The values of k for which that equation has no real roots are all values of k that are smaller than negative 4. This one is asking us for which values of t will the equation f of x plus t is equal to 0 have equal roots? First of all, if you look at the left hand side, we are given our function of x, which is that quadratic function there then plus t, and we know a lot about adding a number to a function. The t that we are adding there tells us that the function f will be shifted t units vertically. But remember again we said if you are solving equations graphically, you need to draw the graph of the function that is on the left hand side, and also draw the graph of the function on the right hand side. So the function on the left-hand side is f of x plus t. So we need to draw the graph of y equals f of x plus t. Then the function on the right-hand side is 0. So we must draw the graph of y is equal to 0. 
the graph y is equal to 0 is the x-axis, so it's drawn already. We need to fix it there. Otherwise, the graph that we need to draw now is the graph of y equals f of x plus t. If I draw that graph, those are the many different positions for the graph of f of x plus t. We want f of x plus t and y is equal to 0 to touch only once. That is the only time we can get equal roots. So equal roots are found when the graphs intersect only once. And it looks like the original graph was pushed four units up in order to get to that point C there. And the number of units it is pushed up is actually the value of T. So if we need to get equal roots, then T must be equal to four. Okay, let's look at number four. For which values of m will x squared plus 2x plus m equal to 0 have an equal real roots? And for that to happen, the graphs that you are going to draw must intersect in two different places. So which graphs are we going to draw here? We need to draw the graph of the function on the left-hand side as well as the graph of the function on the right-hand side. So we need to draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x plus m, that is the left-hand side, and then also draw the graph of y is equal to 0, which is the right-hand side. This function y equals x squared plus 2x plus m is actually obtained from our given function f of x. So x squared plus 2x plus m is equal to 0. But I need to see clearly the function f of x. That is why I'm putting a minus 3 there. I'm adding a minus 3 there. You see, it is not here. I don't see it there. But I'm putting it there. But if I add negative 3 to the left, I must also add negative 3 to the right to balance the equation. So that is what I did there. And the reason is because I want to be able to write f of x because I need to express that function in terms of f of x. So x squared plus 2x minus 3 is f of x. That is why I wrote f of x here. All that plus m is equal to negative 3. And then if I collect my terms, I need to bring the minus 3 to the other side. And so this is what I end up getting here. I need to draw the graph of f of x plus m plus 3 and also draw the graph of y equal to 0 so that I can tell where they intersect. Remember, these two graphs should intersect in two places in order for us to get two unequal real roots. Those are the many different possible positions for the graph of f of x plus m plus 3. Now, we need it to meet or to intersect the graph of y equal to 0. Now, the graph of y equal to 0 is the x-axis, and we need them to intersect twice so that we can get two real roots. That turning point there, it does not intersect. I mean, that graph with that turning point does not intersect with the x-axis. This graph also does not intersect. This one also will not intersect. This one intersects, but only once. They only touch only once, so that won't work. This one here, you can see it crosses the x-axis in two different places. That one also crosses the x-axis in two different places. That one also, and this one also, and this one also, and that one also. So f of x has a turning point here at point A. And we are adding m plus 3, but we need to add m plus 3 in such a way that the, the pink graph that we are getting will cross the x-axis in two different places. So if we push f of x exactly four units, we will end up at that turning point there, at minus one zero. And that will not give us two points of intersection. So we shouldn't push f of x more than four blocks, which means 
m plus 3 should be less than 4. And so that means m should be less than 1. In this question here, p must be positive. Now this time our graph is moving to the left and to the right, depending on the value of p. Now that equation f of x plus p equal to 0, we need to draw two graphs so that the two graphs will meet and give us a negative root as well as a positive root. So we need two roots. One root should be negative, the other root should be positive. So in order to solve the equation f of x plus p is equal to zero, we need to draw two graphs. The graph of the function on the left-hand side, which is why we need to draw y equals f of x plus p, as well as the graph of the function on the right-hand side, which is given by y is equal to zero. So if I draw the graph of f of x plus p, you will notice the graph is moving to the left because p is positive. We are shifting our red graph horizontally to the left because we are told in the question that p is positive. Now, first of all, the original graph, which is f of x, is cutting the y, sorry, is cutting the x-axis in two places. And at this point, it gives us a negative root. We get a negative root there, which is what we want. But there we get a positive root, which is exactly what we want. Right. Then the second graph that you see there is cutting here at M as well as here. So at N, that's a negative because it's on the left side of the y-axis and m is on the right hand side of that so of the x axis of the y axis so that is what we want but if you look at the next graph this graph here touches at 0 0 and touches there at negative 4 so x is equal to negative 4 that is negative that is fine but unfortunately here x is equal to 0 and 0 is not positive we need a situation where the x intercepts are 2 and one of them is negative and the other one is positive. Right, so what is the value of P? So the, the red graph, our original red graph, can be shifted to the left so that we get the intercepts, one of them negative and the other one positive. But in order for us to achieve that, we need to be careful how many units we, we will shift it to the left. Can we shift it half a unit to the left? Yes, we can shift it half a unit to the left. We'll get to that point M there. But can we shift it one unit to the left? If we shift it one unit to the left, we'll end up with that point zero zero. So X is now zero. So even though the other intercept is negative, X equal to zero is not going to be positive. So we cannot shift our graph to the left by more than one unit. So we need to shift by more than zero units, but less than one unit.